Welcome back stormwater designers. In this video, we're going to do another hydrology education rundown. It's the basics of the rational method part three. We're going to go over rainfall intensity and project area. I am your instructor. A little bit about Clear Creek Solutions. We do software development, hydrology education and clinics such as these hydrology education videos, as well as projects involving stormwater analysis and facility modeling. Okay, so let's review the rational method real quick, which is Q equals CIA, that basic equation where Q equals discharge, C equals runoff coefficient, A equals site acreage, and I equals rainfall intensity. In the previous video, we went over Q and C. In this video, we're going to go over site acreage and I rainfall intensity. So just to remind you about the units, Q is measured in cubic feet per second, C is dimensionless, I is typically measured in inches per hour, and A is in acres. So if we're talking about I, rainfall intensity, well, that's going to be measured in inches per hour. And I think most importantly, we want to determine how can you calculate that average rainfall intensity? Where does this number come from? Well, rainfall intensities can be accurately measured by means of a continuously recorded uh, autographic rain gauge. It's also possible to time the length of individual rainstorms and calculate the average intensities by dividing the measured rainfall depths by the corresponding duration of the storm. So there's actually a lot of different ways you can measure rainfall intensity. It just depends on the time interval you're using and the amount of rainfall you're collecting. In this case, for the rational method, it's going to be on a per hour basis. But for some rain gauge measurements and for some usage such as continuous simulation hydrology, we want to track that, um, that rainfall or that rainfall intensity in more 15 minute time steps to get a little more accurate picture of what's going on for the situation. But in the rational method, it's going to be in a per hour basis to measure the rainfall intensity. Rainfall intensity I can also be derived from IDF curves. And IDF cur curves are intensity duration frequency curves, which has intensity in inches per hour on the y-axis, the duration of minutes on the x-axis, and the different degrees of storms here. We got the 100-year storm, 50-year storm, 25-year storm, etc. If you don't understand what these 100-year, um, 50-year storms mean, essentially, it's just the percent chance of a storm occurring in a certain um, you know in a certain period or a certain hundred year period so for example a hundred year storm has a one percent chance of occurring for a given year a 50 year storm has a two percent chance of occurring a 25 year storm has a, a storm has a four percent chance of occurring in a given year and so on so that's what those values mean now if we're talking about the a in the rational method when S uscs units are used a is measured in acres. That's very important. For Q equals CIA, we need that to be in acres. Now, you can convert it to feet squared, but in the context of the equation, you want to keep that in acres. Another important thing to keep in mind is that the maximum area of 200 acres can be used for the rational method. So it's supposed to be used for smaller watershed design, as they say. It's measured on the horizontal plane, and all land enclosed by the surrounding drainage area uh, divides that area that will be used. So let's think about the runoff coefficient relationship or the rational method. Uh, with the greater rainfall intensity, we're going to have greater peak flow. This makes sense because with more rainfall, the more intense the rainfall, we're going to have more runoff from a site. And of course, with a greater project area, encompassing, encompassing more area and gathering more rainfall, we're also going to get a greater peak flow. So with more rainfall intensity for a given period, more peak flow will definitely occur. Like I said, I found this. You can see the link in the left corner here. This rational method calculator if you want to learn more about the relationships between these different values and what you will get for peak discharge. So if you're confused about these different methods, continuous simulation, single event, rational method, we have an ultimate hydrology guide for you. Click the link down below to download that where you can learn about the different kinds of hydrology and their uses. Uh, so click that link down, down below, download the ultimate hydrology guide, and we'll see you guys in the next video.